The long game framework helps me create the future that I imagine. And I've been using this framework to create uh, the future since I was a kid. The long game framework is made up of a series of modules. It starts with the rules of vision, outcomes, strategies, people, plans, progress, learning, and proof. And each one of these modules has a series of questions and components that are filled in uh, in advance. The modules define the future world and the components needed to assemble it. And the way it works is that the rules establish the values, principles, and practices that I use to make decisions. And I define these things before the vision and dreams because it's good to have rules of the game. And uh, the, the vision should be based on the, a person's rules of how they operate their lives. So it's you know, important to define that. Um, the vision is a, is a series of dreams about the future world. And each one of those dreams has outcomes. And an outcome is something that is as a result of creating that dream, there will be something that comes out of it. And those things are measurable, the things that come out. And those are called goals. And goals have a value, a, uh, a date, and uh, some of them responsible. Um, strategies define the relationships and I use a geodesic structure to organize the strategies in the campaigns that I do and this is really I think the key to creating a, a framework that's flexible and adaptable because the components that live on this strategy architecture are cross-functionally connected and uh, since most of the time things don't work out the way I imagine Having multiple tactics uh, in a strategic architecture in a way that's cross-functionally connected means that if any one tactic doesn't work, uh, there are more tactics around it and related to it in different ways that based on what I can, what I'll learn from the, the first tactic not working out the way I imagined is I can tune the next ones and increase the chances that, that they will work. Um, next is uh, people. Once I know, the next is people. Once I know uh, the uh, strategy, it's much easier to find people that fit in that strategy based on their roles and strengths and capabilities. Uh, after that, after I know the people and I know the strategy, I create a plan, which is a series of steps. Um, and uh, those steps you know, are time sequential and interconnected in different ways. And I usually use like a project management tool or a Gantt chart to, to manage the plan. And I have a, a, a gigantic plan for Project Honey Lake. Uh, then I track a progress against plan. And this gives me a sense of the trajectory of the project or campaign. Uh, almost always I'm behind uh, time. Uh, maybe things take longer. Almost always things take longer than I imagine. And things cost more than I imagine. And that's because when I ask people questions about time and cost, in their mind, they always tell me the best case scenario. And they're trying to, to um, you know, sell me on their ideas about how long things will take. Uh, but also, they're usually hopelessly unaware of the things that are outside their control. And so things always take longer and cost more money. And that's the way it is. Um, then uh, there are, uh, I, in the beginning, when I'm designing these things, I define in advance the things I'm going to learn if things work and if things don't work. So basically at every step of the plan, in this time sequential plan, I think about in the major milestones, uh, what is something, what are a few things that I'll learn if this goes according to plan and what are a few things I'll learn if this doesn't go according to plan. And the benefit of this is you learn twice as fast. Because you not only uh, learn about, like through trial and error, which is I think the most common way to learn, but you learn to learn about learning. And you can start to think about like where are holes in my game? Why, why did I get this one wrong? So if you, so if you plan something to happen and it doesn't, why was, why, why was that uh, plan I inaccurate? 
And what could you learn from that? So learning about learning is important to, to increase the rate of learning. And then the, the last step here is proof, which is um, for major milestones in the project, how will I prove that they're accomplished? And what this does is it gives me a point in the future state to reverse engineer against. And Project Honey Light is the, the example uh, of this. And I've been uh, doing this with Project Honey Light uh, since I was 15. So um, life is lucky. So specifically, uh, diving into this, the uh, rules uh, define the operating system of the way that the game of life is played. And the vision creates a clear picture of the future. And if you have a clear picture of the future, you can put it in other people's minds. And that's really important. Um, outcomes, uh, basically uh, a way to have a series of things that you can measure that are milestones. Because as you're, as you're creating a future world, uh, you need to know like what are the key uh, uh, timelines and milestones that those things were uh, to prove that those those things were created, and also uh, noting the uh, dependencies between milestones. And the next is the strategy, which can be um, uh, modeled as a flowchart, a series of how things that are uh, related in time. So if you imagine a series of cross-functional relationships, and then you imagine a plan that sits on top of that. And the plan is sequential. What that means is that, is that if you're a, um, a spider crawling around the outside of this dome, that you're navigating through it in a certain time order, uh, going from triangle to triangle, uh, doing specific job function and another specific job function, and basically assembling the world in an order. And this can be modeled on a flowchart of how, how, that, how the um, spider would move through the system. And that's world building. That's, the, that's how it gets done. The people are helpers and they are specialists. And I like to find specialists in different things, uh, specialist writers, specialist web people, specialist song, you know, people, um, people that know how to build you know, buildings, um, specialists. Because uh, the specialists are better than generalists when you know what you want to build. Um, they're not as good at solving general problems. But if you know what it is that, that you want them to do, it's, it's more efficient to, to hire specialists. Uh, and then next is uh, um, the build phase, where the plan is converted into things that are created. And I'm at that phase now, Project Honey Lake, building a ton of stuff in West Virginia at, uh, at Honey Lake Lamping. Uh, progress matches the trajectory. Um, the progress shows the trajectory of the project. And uh, basically, I look at what, are, what is the position of all the ideas, what is the velocity, momentum, and friction. And all these things, is, it's no different than, than uh, running to intercept a ball uh, that's in the future, uh, the, 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 a ball that only exists in the future in your mind. And you're running to the story that you created, to where you imagined where you knew where it was. And if you catch it, then you successfully um, predicted the future and uh, managed uh, your trajectory and optimized as, as you went along. Um, the next is, uh, is, is learning about optimization, which is reducing friction. And that's tuning the system. And that really um, is also about uh, thinking through the kinds of things that go wrong, not just on the system that is being assembled, but similar ones. So I know I've had about 30 businesses and uh, maybe five different kinds of businesses. And they have pros and cons, these different, these different operating models. Um, but knowing, uh, knowing the pros and cons and knowing the kinds of things that are easy to tune and the kinds of things that are really hard to tune, um, this kind of optimization is, um, has made it easier for me to select businesses that are tunable. And uh, that's been good. And then proof, um, which is where the uh, storylines end. And it's important in the beginning to define endpoints uh, for different storylines and, and then reverse engineer those endpoints uh, to the present through this, this uh, architecture. And, and dream weaving really is just uh, um, weaving dreams into stories that exist outside uh, your mind. And this is a way to do that. 
The rules define the way I play the game of life. The vision synthesizes the dreams into a series of stories. The stories define the outcomes and measurable goals of the future world. The strategy organizes the cross-functional relationships into campaigns. People are hired to build specific components. The plan defines the series of steps that assemble the components into the vision. Tracking progress of individual projects identifies intersecting timelines and opportunities. Learning improves the chances of creating the vision within the time, effort, and risk constraints. And proof defines the final sequences of the storylines in advance. And this makes it possible to reverse engineer the steps to weave the dreams into reality. And this is Dreamweaving for Dreamweavers.